Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our NPC Online Bible Study. I'm Matt. My name is Matthew McGlade, the lead and teaching pastor here at Mansfield Pentecostal Church. But every Tuesday night, we have a thought to think about, a question, a question to ponder, and a text to study. And as I say every week, uh, this is an opportunity for you to learn on your own, but even better, with other people. Uh, grab two or three other people together, get a life group going, uh, get some nibbles, get some drinks. Uh, watch the study um, uh, together and uh, you know discuss the questions amongst yourself and that way you get much more out of our time together uh, as we learn uh, through God's Word. Now we are continuing our teaching uh, series over these last uh, few weeks titled The Hope of the World. We're looking at the doctrine, the teaching of the church. Uh, I've called it the hope of the world because, as I, as I mentioned before, the church is the only agency on earth that continues the work of Jesus, bringing the kingdom of God into a world uh, now that Jesus is in heaven. Someday he will come back uh, to this world and he will bring the kingdom in its fullness. But in the meantime, the church has been uh, entrusted with the task, the responsibility to uh, represent the kingdom of God here on earth. We've looked at various metaphors that are used in the Bible to describe the church. Uh, we've looked at the purpose of the church, its nature, its purity, the importance of its unity. And uh, we've looked recently at the authority of the church in terms of its spiritual authority, the relationship between the church and the state and spiritual discipline and church discipline. And last week, uh, you remember, we started to look at the governance or the leadership of the church. And uh, we started to look at that question, are apostles for today, are there such a thing, such thing or such leadership roles as apostles in the church today, um, as they were at the time of Jesus? Now, what I want to do uh, tonight is I want to look at, look at another important leadership function role in the church, and that is the role of a pastor. And I want to really ask this question, who are pastors? Who are pastors? Uh, what do they do? Uh, what role do they play in the governance and in the leadership of the church? And uh, we wouldn't really know anything about pastors unless Paul had act, hadn't explicitly mentioned them in his letter to the church of Ephesus when he writes that so Christ himself gave the apostles, or one translation says some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And so we see that along with a prophet, an evangelist, a teacher, along with an apostle, there's also this important role of a pastor. Fully enough, though, in the all of the New Testament writings, this is the only time the office, the function, the role, the title of a pastor is actually used. is isn't used anywhere else in the New Testament. And so this makes us ask the question then, who are pastors? What do pastors do? Well, the Greek word uh, for pastor, poio, I think is to pronounce the word right. I'll probably pronounce it wrong. There's a verbal form of that word, and it literally means to shepherd. So a pastor is someone who shepherds, who tends, who cares, who nurtures, who feeds, who guides God's people. And it is a great responsibility. In fact, um, you know, throughout the Old Testament, there are wonderful parallels of, of uh, God's leaders being shepherds amongst God's people. God was a shepherd to David when David said, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Ezekiel rebuked the spiritual leaders of the day because they were bad shepherds. They weren't being shepherds of God's people who tend and cared for God's people and healed and bandaged them. And so it's a beautiful picture, you know, that Moses in many ways was a shepherd to the children of Israel when he brought them out of Egypt. So this imagery of a shepherd, of a pastor, is such a beautiful imagery uh, for God's leaders in the church. And, uh, you know, and so this is an important office, this is an important role, uh, that of a, of a pastor. And so this really doesn't specifically answer the question in the New Testament context of the church, who are pastors? And there are two occasions in the New Testament where the, the verbal form of this word uh, pastor or to shepherd is used to describe a particular type of person in the church. Uh, so, for example, when Paul was speaking to the elders of the church of Ephesus in the book of Acts, Paul says something really interesting. He says to them, keep watch over yourselves and all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you 
overseers. So that Greek, the word there, overseer, is the Greek word episkopos, which we'll come back to. And so um, he says, the order, which the Holy Spirit made the overseers. And then Paul specifically uses this word shepherd. He says this, be shepherds, okay? Be shepherds of the church of God, which he bought with his own blood. And so Paul understood that the elders of the church of Ephesus were to be shepherds or to be pastors of the church of God. Um, I'm also going to read to you again what Peter says from 1 Peter chapter 5. I'm going to read to you from the uh, ESV. And uh, Peter says this, uh, So I exhort the elders among you uh, as, fellow, uh, as a fellow elder, <coughs> sorry, and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, as well as a partaker of the glory that is to be revealed, and listen to what Peter says, shepherd the flock of God that is among you. Shepherd the flock of God that is among you, exercising oversight. I think that, again, that Greek word episkopos is there again, okay? Not under compulsion, but willingly as God would have you, not for shameful gain, but, e but, uh, not, but eagerly, not domineering over those of your charge, but being an example to the flock. I love those words from Peter uh, and addressing the elders. You know, you not to, you, we don't do this. Uh, we don't shepherd for financial gain. Uh, we don't do this for prestige. We don't uh, lord it over those, but we serve those that God has given to us to pastor, to love and to lead and to nurture. And so in each of these cases, I want you to notice something that that word to shepherd, which is the verbal form of that word pastor, is addressed to the elders of the church. And so in many ways, the elders of the church are the ones who are the pastors, who should shepherd. You know, throughout the, the New Testament, often uh, the word elder and overseer, episkopos, sometimes we translate it bishop, those words are often used interchangeably and they're both referring to the same person. So the elder is the person who has oversight of the church. An elder is a someone who pastors the church. And in many ways, uh, elder isn't so much a description of the age of the person as it is about the maturity of the person. So elder is really a description of the character of the person. And the word episkopos to oversee is a, is a description of what they do. They oversee the affairs of the church. They shepherd the affairs of the church. They shepherd the people of God. They are pastors to them. And also, the other thing we should also notice about pastors isn't necessarily just one pastor for a church, but actually could be a plurality of pastors over a church. When Paul wrote to the church of Philippi, he says to all of God's holy people in Christ Jesus at Philippi, together with the overseers and deacons. Sorry, let me just close the door there. Someone's phone was going off. <laughs> I'm sure you'll uh, put up with that. But so we, we see here that um, there was a plurality of leadership in the church. There was a, t a pastoral team in the church. And so from Paul's description and Peter's description as well, elders play a supervisory role, role in the life of the church, where they guide the church, they direct the church, they guard the church, uh, they seek to work for the unity of the church, they protect the church from false teaching, they play a key role in guarding the church, they're the gatekeepers of the church in many ways, uh, they preserve true doctrine, uh, they care for the people, they love the people, they nurture the people. And so we see that there's a really important role that elders play or pastors play in the leadership of the church. What I want to do just now, I want to look at three functions that pastors carry out. Firstly, pastors teach. Paul says of pastors or elders that above all, now an overseer, he says, should be above reproach, faithful to his wife, or literally in Greek that says a one-woman man, temperate, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach. And so it was important in Paul's mind that a clear function of a pastor, and this is actually what distinguishes a pastor from a deacon or a servant leader of a church, is the ability to teach. 
Um, it's also why some people think that when Paul in Ephesians talks about pastors and teachers, he's not necessarily talking about two different functions. He's actually talking about the same person. And so really when you think about it, the ability to teach, and notice that Paul says they must be able to teach, not necessarily that they have to teach or have to teach every week, but they must be apt to teach. And clearly this demonstrates that one of the most important functions of a pastor is to teach God's people. Because when you think about it, teaching is probably the most important function of a pastor. It influences the church. It shapes the culture of the church. It sets the direction of the church. And this is also another reason why the character of the pastor is incredibly important. When Paul was writing to Timothy, he says, if anyone teaches otherwise, and in other words, teaching another doctrine that Paul teaches, and does not agree with sound instruction with our Lord Jesus Christ to, to God and to godly teaching, they are conceited and understand nothing. So what Paul demonstrates is that the quality of the teaching of the pastor depends to a large extent to the character of the pastor. If the leader, if the pastor, if the elder has a bad character, they will misuse scripture, they won't rightly interpret scripture, and they'll misuse scripture for wrong ends, and they won't handle it correctly. And that's why Paul says to Timothy, you know, watch your life and your doctrine so you save both yourself and your hearers. And so those in spiritual leadership, those who are called specifically to be pastors in the church, we need to watch our lives, we need to watch our doctrine, because we have a responsibility to bring God's word to his people. And that is a great responsibility. And that is the role of a pastor. So pastors teach. Second thing that pastors do, not only do pastors teach, pastors lead. Paul explains in, to Romans, to those who have the gift to lead, let them do it diligently. Now let me just say something here. You don't necessarily have to be a pastor of church to have a gift of leadership. Uh, you know, I, I believe that churches can have leaders at mid-level, not necessarily you set the direction of the church, but are great at ex executing the vision of the church. Uh, some people are just naturally gifted leaders and they're brilliant sol problem solvers. And, uh, you know, if you are a naturally gifted leader and you're a brilliant problem solver and you come to Mansell Pentecostal Church, come and see me because I want to use you. OK, I want to release you because actually they can actually bring leadership and get things moving forward, which is absolutely an amazing gift in the life of the church. But nevertheless, as a pastor, it would seem to be an important role or an important gift, at least to, de to develop. Uh, and so leadership, as I mentioned, is important at every level of the church, but it's also important at a pastoral level. Paul says to Timothy, he says that the elders uh, who direct the affairs of the church, that word direct is the same word to lead, as I mentioned earlier on in Romans who direct the face of the church well are worthy of double honour, especially those whose work is in preaching and teaching. And so what Paul says, that this gift of leadership is really crucial uh, for those who are in pastoral leadership, who bring direction to the church. Similar to this gift of leadership is this other gift uh, that Paul mentions in Corinthians, that, that is the gift of guidance. Uh, it's a different Greek word to the word, uh, and this word here of guidance is actually a nautical term. Uh, some um, translations translated gifts of administration. Sometimes it's translated forms of leadership. And what that means is this is the sort of gift that actually are, are great at strategizing, uh, setting strategy. So this type of leader, what they do is that the goal is set, the vision is set. They develop the means and the strategy to get to that goal. And that is an important gift in pastoral leadership. Uh, and I mentioned before, it is a nautical term. It's sometimes used to describe the helmsman of the, who steers the boat and, and sets the direction that the, captain, uh, that the captain has already set. And so these, these gifts of leadership are important in pastors. It's important that uh, pastoral leadership has that. And if a particular pastor isn't strong in one of those gifts, it's important that the pastor builds a team around him uh, to complement that gift and to see that gift 
exercised in you. So, so pastors teach, pastors lead, but the third thing that pastors do is that pastors care. Closely tied to the function of teaching and leadership is that of caring. Um, Paul mentions that those of oversight are to take care of God's church. The word here, care here, actually has a medical connotation uh, that is sometimes associated with healing. And, uh, you know, pastors play an important role in helping people who are broken, who are fragile, who need to, to come to that place of healing and wholeness. Uh, pastors play an important role of supplying that which is lacking in the faith of others. Some people are just in a very vulnerable, broken place. And actually what they need is the strength that comes into their lives to, to encourage them in their faith, to nurture them in their walk. Um, Paul kind of beautifully sums this up when he says, Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin... You who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. You who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. And so I believe in a sense we could all be pastoral, okay? Uh, we could all be pastors to each other in a, in a sense. But it's important, particularly in the role of a pastor, that a pastor plays that role in helping people come to that place of wholeness and strength in the walk with God. And so pastors act as the guardians of the church. They challenge those who distort the truth of God's word. They teach the whole counsel of God's word. And so it is an important and a critical role for the health of the church. Well, guys, that's a thought to think about. I trust you've got something out of that. Hey, listen, question uh, to ponder or questions to ponder. If you aspire to being a pastor, what leadership qualities do you feel you need to grow in? What practical steps can you take to become a more caring person? And how can you prepare yourself to teach others? And that's our question to ponder in your small groups. And a text of study, I'd like you to read Acts 20, verses 28, uh, Paul's address to the elders. And uh, from those words, I'd like you to summarize, from Paul's words, describe the role of of an elder describe the role of an elder guys thanks for listening tonight i hope you got something out of that hey hope to see you uh, over the weekend god bless you all see you soon